morning, everyone. Welcome to The Laws of Life. I'm your host, Blanca Perper Greenstein, and today's guest is Miss Jackie Powell, attorney at law and judicial candidate for County Court Judge Broward County Group 19. That's right. Congratulations on being a judicial candidate. Thank you. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna analyze, we're gonna cross examine uh, this cross famous examine. attorney, Jackie Powell, <laughs> and hopefully we're gonna learn some laws of life today from you as we learn about your journey. Thank you. So why don't we start off with, with the foundation? You okay. know, when you're cross examining a witness first you gotta lay the foundation, right? So tell us about your education. Where did you go to law school? So um, I am a Florida um, student. I went to Florida Atlantic University for undergrad and I have a bachelor's degree in English literature and I went to law school at Nova Southeastern University right here in Davie, Florida. And when now when you went to college mm -hmm. what did you major in? I majored in English lit, English lit um, in undergrad and then you know law school they make you learn everything you know that. <laughs> What was your favorite subject in law school? So, you know, I had that conversation. Civil procedure was my favorite subject. And everybody says, what's wrong with you? Um, and what's wrong with me is not <laughs> what, what was wrong with me is that I was a paralegal before I went to law school. And so, and, and the, the attorneys that I worked for did um, federal work. And so civil procedure was very important. It is extremely. And so I had to learn to make sure that everything was on time, timely filed, and that everything was done the right way. And so I found it to be my best course. You know, they say some of the best attorneys were paralegals because you got real life experience before you went to law school. Do you think that's the I case? I really believe that. It is definitely true. And um, and, and I told you that uh, there's a, I met a Civ Pro professor from uh, UM and he said the exact same thing. He said, you guys know too much when you come to the class. <laughs> so. Well, I remember even back in my days in law school that the people that had the real life experience were much more successful mm -hmm. in terms of being able to answer questions mm -hmm. and being able to relate to real life situations. Yes. Because when you went to law school, your children were the ages of four and seven. Yes, ma'am. You had two small children. Yes, ma'am. And your 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 was it your daughter that you were dropping off at the preschool at Nova? Well, then you went to law school <laughs> across the street. Right. So <laughs> so I wasn't the the, the regular aged um, law, uh, law student. I was thirty three when I went to law school, and I was already married a couple of years. And my daughter was seven, and my son was four. But it was great because my no my daughter was at Nova Nova Elementary, um, and so it was right across the street. I would drop her off in the morning, go to class, and then I would go to class. So you were I'd, both going to school at the we same time. We were both time. going to school at the same time. There you go. I hope you didn't get the books confused. No, she was studying no. the procedure. <laughs> so. So tell me, why initially, why did you want to be a lawyer? What what attracted you to the practice of law? Well, you know, so working as a paralegal, um, that intrigued me a lot. And then the attorneys that I worked with were so engaging. They would, Blanca, they would take me to the law library at Nova. That's when we didn't have everything electronically. Mm -hmm. And I would have to pull all the books down from the shelf, and we would have to go back to the books to shepherdize. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> and so at the law library at Nova, they see me coming. They would say, we need a card, because they knew I was going to be there all day, pulling all the books from the shelf, shepherdizing, making lists, and go to go back to the office um, to report what I've learned. So um, that was intriguing. I loved every time I walked into the, the, the law school, I felt like ah, I need to be in this place. It felt um, good. It felt, it felt good. like you, you were in the right place. Yes. yes. So you love legal research. I did. And what kind of law do you currently practice as a lawyer? So currently I manage my own firm and I mainly now do family law and criminal defense work. Because I started out my career at the public defender's office. Oh, so we have that in common. Oh, I, I was a public defender for three years I at Broward. Know. At Broward? Yes. I didn't know that. I was yes. a public defender at Broward for almost eight years. Wow. What years were you there? Uh, two thousand and three till about two thousand and eleven. So you came a little bit after me. Mm. I was there ninety five to ninety eight. Oh, okay. So what divisions did you serve in as a public defender? So I started out. I spent eight months in the domestic violence unit. 
I wow. remember that. And I remember one of the senior attorneys coming in one morning and saying, it's time for you to be somewhere else. <laughs> so <laughs> she said, you've learned this area. It's time for you to be somewhere else. And she went down and told the supervisors. And the next week I was in felony court. Um, That's <laughs> great. Cases. Um, and f- five years into the PD's office, then they made me a supervising attorney for the county court. And so okay. now I was um, working with the new attorneys as they came in. I would sit with them in trial, go with them to court. You know, you I'd be the one to pick the jury and they do the rest of the case oh, or I do the closing argument. Excellent. Yeah, to help them prepare. Five years is a long time in the public defender. Mm-hmm. How many jury trials did you do during that time? I would say 50 of my own cases. 50? Yes. That's a lot of trials. Yes, yes. That's a lot. I guess that makes sense because yes, like, it was you a do long about time. ten a year as right. a public defender. Right. Right. So, what is your uh, what was your philosophy on on jury on jury selection? Well, um, some <laughs> it's funny that you asked that because somebody said the other day, "Young people, we need young people, <laughs> you know, free thinkers, and you know you could tell them, you know, and they could see through all the things that other people, you know, are so grounded in their mind that you know they're so they're already biased on certain things. So they so young people because they have an have open mind because they have an open mind. Interesting. Yes. And why do you want to be a judge? So I want to be a judge because I really want to um, make a change. And yesterday I was at a women's seminar and they said, if, if you can't keep talking about change, if you're only willing to lean in. The speaker I like that said, law of life. The speaker said, if you want to make a change, you have to jump in. And so um, last <laughs> November I was sitting and I said, I think I really want to do this. I want to be able to um, have, uh, it, it, we're talking about judicial diversity, but I'm not only talking about sex and race, you know, it's everything that anybody can achieve something. So I want to, you know, be um, that person for, you know, that platform. Um, and I also um, want to see a change in the integrity of the judicial bench here in Broward. And I really believe that I can make that difference. What quality do you think you possess that will make that difference? You know what? I am the most patient person you will ever meet. Really patient. Wow. The one time (laughs) I was thinking coming here this morning, the one time I ever really like lost it with a judge. I was so scared because I just really thought that he was not treating me and my client right. Mm -hmm. And I lost it. Wow. And, um, <laughs> what happened? Did you get held in contempt? And so I was afraid I was going to get held in contempt. <laughs> I was still at the public defender's office. I ran downstairs and I, Howard Finkelstein was in charge. And oh, I said, yes. Howard, this judge is going to call you. Here's what happened. I just want you to know my side before he calls you. Um, and he, you know, he says, Oh, you let me know. So we went back up. It was after lunch and I went back up after lunch. And as soon as court was called into session, the judge said, Miss Powell, I'd like to see you sidebar. And my heart is oh, like, Oh, scary. <laughs> and I go sidebar and I said, Yes, judge. <laughs> and he said, You are the most nicest, civil, respectable person that I've ever met. And he said, the way you were a couple hours ago, I never want to see you like that again. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm telling you that if there's ever any problem going on in the courtroom, you call me sidebar and tell me, judge, Ah. this is what I think. This is what I, you know, I think is going on. And let's see how we can fix it. Because I don't want to lose it again. That actually gives me chills. Yes. (laughs) Well, listen, we're all human beings. Of course. And, you know, we, we try to be as patient as we can, mm-hmm. but we're not perfect. No. That's why we're human. Right. But I think the judge addressed it in a very yes. sweet way yes. with you. Yes. And I'm sure you, you obviously never forgot that never moment. Never forgot it. And um, I find that when I do lose control, mm-hmm. which we all do because mm-hmm. we're human, mm-hmm. that it, it's actually physically exhausting. And it can take me a good two to four days to recuperate. Yes. So I think about that and I think, okay. It's not worth it. No. It just depletes too much battery power it really as does. a human being. So since that since that occasion, uh, your patience levels even increased exponentially. Yes, you know, of course, you live and you learn. And so you learn, you know, how to deal with situations. And so you don't sit and let it broil. What, what was it that day about that case 
that that crazy well, well, upset you. Was well, it, was well, it what just, happened is I, you know, you know. As, let's, let's get the real scoop here. As public defenders, you're in the courtroom all the time. You and are. So sometimes, and so I believe the judge was taking advantage of the fact that. This is where we are all the time, and wouldn't call my cases. And oh, all my clients were sitting there. Oh, so it was the, it was literally just the, the time yes. to be called. Yes, and so all my clients were sitting there thinking, "We've been here since you know, you know what's okay. going on," and so they were losing it, and so I was feeling it for them, you know, and, and I didn't think it was fair that you know we were being treated that way. Oh, so I hear you. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> um, what did you find as the number one root cause of domestic violence situation? Was it the use of alcohol that you observed during your time there? Or? It, it definitely is. But, you know, Blanca, it also, um, lack of finances is a big thing. When people are poor and they're going through all kinds of struggles, it, it is just like they're there. Nobody knows what else to do. And it, it becomes a big factor. So it's, it, there, there is alcohol. And then, you know, the, it's poverty. It, you've got to call it what it is, and sometimes it, it's very difficult for people. Then they don't know how to manage their lives, and they don't know how to deal with each other, and somebody needs something, and, and the other person doesn't have it to provide, and, you know, it becomes a big issue. How do you think, I mean, you told me you grew up, where did you grow up? So, I was born in Jamaica, and um, uh, my family migrated to the United States when I was 16. Okay, so, when you got accepted to college. Mm-hmm. Were your parents able to afford college? So at 16, I came at 16. Two years later, I'm graduating high school. And no, my parents were not ready. They they came hoping to make a better life, but I was the oldest child, and they were just not ready. So how did you how did you do? So what I had to do was as soon as I started, I had to um, I got a part time job, and so I worked all my way through college, um, helping to provide my bus fare, my lunch money, you know, all that stuff so that I would be able to. And you, and how did you feel about it? You were okay with it? You know what? I was. I was okay because I knew that I was helping my parents and I knew that they were not being mean or vindictive. Withdraw, withholding. Or withholding. It was just a fact that they didn't have. Right. So you had a successful college career, went to law school, and how long have you been practicing law at this time? Right now, I've been practicing for 15 years. And what, what's the number one law of life you've learned as a lawyer? As a lawyer, you know, you cannot, you should never take things at face value. Uh, so, so tell me more about that. So. <laughs> you have both sides of the story? You always have to hear both sides of the story. Sometimes, you know, people come in with the strangest stories and you're thinking, that can't be right. And then, you know, you find out later on that it is right. And so, you, you know, I've learned not to um, judge people based on what I see before me. We've got to investigate and we've got to hear all sides. Absolutely. Yeah. You do a lot of the, obviously, discovery depositions when yes. you defend your clients on the criminal side. What You also do family law. Yes. In the divorce context... Any any advice for our viewers on, on the best way to approach a divorce situation? Well, you know, I always say that if you come to the place where you know that this marriage is over, you've got to be ready to make sure that you're going to make it be over. Sometimes people say we're ready to, for it to be over, but they're really not. And you know they're really not because then when they start saying, I want the bed and I want the, the pink chair... When they start getting petty over <laughs> personal <movies. laughs> You know that they're not ready. And I That's say, true. I always tell them, you have to be ready. Because if you're not ready, this is going to go on forever. You're going to fight over the scissors and the plant. And the, <laughs> you know, so you've got to be ready. Yeah, I've seen a lot of cases where, per, in my own experience, where personal property mm-hmm. can become extremely litigious. Oh, yes. that, right down to the soap dish. Oh, yes. <laughs> and um, it's a, it's that's a good law of life is make sure that you're ready. Yeah, yeah. And what's your number one law of life as a parent? Now you have two children, both in their twenties. What do you say? You you you've gotten you've gotten them into the twenties. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank so you. So what do you say to the parents out there? What is so, what's your, what are your secrets on parenting? So what I'm saying now is that you have to let your children become who they want to be. I like that. You have to. Um, and so I never told my, any of my children that, you know, they should become lawyers, even though I'm the only lawyer in my family. 
Um, I want to have another lawyer, but my children are <laughs> artistic. My need, son is a musician. Wow. He plays the drums and the keyboards and the bass, and he wants so to he be was a producer. So he blessed with artistic skills. My daughter sings, and um, nobody wants to go to law school. Well, we'll have to get her to come to uh, <laughs> You wanted someone to take over the law firm of Jackie Powell. Yes, ma'am. There nobody wants go. to go to law school, but I've learned, because my daughter went to college for the first year, and then she came home and said she didn't want to go back. I go, what? You <laughs> have to go back. What do you mean? And uh, she said, what? Well, you know, at first, you know, she said, well, you know, you push me, you push me, and I want to do this. And so I had to learn. I had to step back and say, you've got to make your own life. I, I agree. I think in life you have to just let things happen sometimes. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, you want things to go down a certain path, a certain yes. avenue. And sometimes I say to myself, it's just not meant to be. Let it be the way it is. <laughs> it is. And, it, you know, especially when you don't, you know, like I said, I was the first to go to law school and the only attorney still in my family. And, you know, when you don't come from a lot, you want to see the next generation, you sure. know. But progressing doesn't always mean becoming a doctor or a lawyer, you know, or a police officer. You've got to, you've got to learn that, so... I, I agree with that. You have you have to go with you have to be true to yourself mm -hmm. and support the kids to yes. be true to themselves yes. because if you don't, they can feel conflicted. Definitely. So obviously, you let your your kids be true to their artistic talents and I, skills, and I, that's wonderful. I learned to let go. My husband always. Yeah. <laughs> My, my husband was always willing to let go. He was buying drum sets for my son at five, and I was like, what are you That's doing? That's adorable. But he, he was always willing to let go, so I've learned to let go. How long have you been a resident of Broward County? 28 years. Um, Where do you live? I live in Plantation. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, I, I say that um, we got married in Queens, New York, um, June 16th. Last weekend was our wedding anniversary. Congrats. Thank you. And so we got married, and and or the honeymoon was to move to South Florida. <laughs> oh, wait a minute! I gotta ask you one more question because I I'm gonna be honest. I could sit here and literally talk to you for the next all day long. I could do an eight hour interview. But let me ask you: What's your how long have you been married? Twenty eight years. So what's your law of life on marriage? How would you do it? Listen, you've got to compromise, Give compromise, in. and work together. That's you the bottom line. That's compromise. Bottom line. Compromise. So sometimes you tell him he's right even when he's not right? Yes. Yes. And especially now that I'm running for <laughs> run, run this campaigning thing, I've got to be like, oh, okay. <laughs> what, what's been most incredible about the campaign journey? This has been the most um, interesting time of my life. I have learned so much more about people because that's all you do every day. You go around meeting people and speaking with them, and it's just so amazing. And then, you know, I was sharing with somebody else that um, I'm living in Broward County for 28 years, but there's so many places that I didn't know. And so this has opened up my eyes to different communities, different ways of life. It's been awesome. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, on behalf of the Laws of Life, we, we truly wish you the very best of luck. Thank you. And, and if Broward County does not elect you county court judge, group 19, I am personally going to file a lawsuit against Broward County. I'm kidding. I don't but know. for everybody there in Broward County, make sure you vote for Jackie Powell. August 28th is the election. Get yes. out there and vote. Make a difference. Vote for Jackie Powell. She's an incredible person. We learned a lot of laws of life today. Thank you. I hope you all learned something today. I know I did. And thanks for watching.